So at the end of last season, I made some predictions on the rankings and who would actually be the top 10 and what the top 10 would look like by the end of the season. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest things to do, especially 12 months out because you're just randomly guessing. There's only a couple of players you can really count on, I guess, at this time of year. But we're going to go through the list on the WTA, the top 10 list of last year, and see how many I got right and see how many close ones I got. And of course, the fun ones, how many I got wrong. So coming in at number 10, I put Paola Badosa, who did have a disappointing season in 2022. She dropped out outside the top 10 after a couple of bad results. So not a great start with Bedosa. Was injured for pretty much the entire season. Not very, very unlucky, I should say, uh, with a back problem for pretty much the entire season. Didn't get to see much of her and see the best of her this year. So hopefully next year she can do better and stay healthy. But coming in at number nine now, I've got Belinda Bencic. Now this is a little bit of a different one. She has been in the top 10 before. She's just outside the top 10 at the moment. But I have a feeling that she is gonna put it together next year, especially after winning the team competition, the Billie Jean King Cup. I think her confidence is gonna be high. So Bencic didn't finish inside the top 10. She actually did get into the top 10 throughout the year though. So that was something. So she came in at the start of the year. She played really, really well in January, February, and into March, but unfortunately couldn't maintain that level. Finished at number 17 in the world at the end of the year. So didn't quite get to that top, but still. I uh, you know, got to the top 10 at some point, so half a point, maybe. <laughs> Coming in number eight now, and I've got Maria Zachary, who is around this point at the moment. I think she might drop down a little bit more than this year. So this is not too bad. She finished at number nine in the world, and those WTA Finals points did drop off, but luckily for her, she got to play the WTA Finals because of Mukova pulling out of the WTA Finals. And she, again, finished at the same spot as she did the last two seasons. She's been in the top 10 for a while now and hasn't dropped out for a long, long time. So Zachary's very consistent. She's just consistently down the bottom half of the top 10. And maybe next year I might have to pick her again. Maybe I might pick her a little higher, but she finished at number nine in the world and I picked number eight, so I'll take that. Coming in at number seven now is Coco Goff. So I've got her drop down as well. She's been as high as number three in the world this year. So she finished at number three in the world and midway through the season, I was looking pretty good on that prediction until Brad Gilbert came along and made her into this beast where she started winning everything. So I'm happy to be proven wrong there. Got to number three in the world, finished at number three in the world, and I would put her way lower than maybe I should have. Of course, she did play really well at the US Open, winning that tournament, won Cincinnati where she had a lot of points to gain as well. So did much better than I expected Coco Goff. Coming in at number six is Alina Rabakina. Now, she should have already probably been at number six in the world at some point this year because of that Wimbledon win, but of course, it wasn't worth anything. But the way she's played to finish off the year, feel like she could really step up next year. So Rebecca finished at number four in the world and did make up all those points that I said that she could do. Remember, she was outside the top 20 at the start of the year. I think she was like 22 in the world. So at the time, it sounded a little bit ridiculous, the number 22 in the world being in the top 10. But of course, with Rabakina, we knew how good she could be. Made the Australian Open final, of course. One Indian Wells, one in Rome as well. Who would have thought that on the clay court? So she really did well, also making it to the WTA finals as well. So she may finish number four. I said number six. Not too bad. Coming in number five now, and I've got Jessica Bagula now. She's been very consistent this year, and I expect her to continue to be consistent, but I do expect her to drop down a little bit in the rankings because of some of the players that are ahead of her. I think might just push her down a little bit. And there it is, my first right prediction. Pagula at five, that's perfect. I, look, she's consistent. And as I said in the video there, just a little bit lower than the top four players and not as good as those Grand Slam champions, but probably the best player not to win a slam this year and the best player not to win a slam in general in that top 10. But she was behind, you know, players like Sviantek, Zabalenka, of course, behind Goff and Rabakina. But I like that. I put it there at number five. She's very consistent. And maybe next year she can be in that top four or top three again. Coming in at number four now, and I've got Ons Jabur, who I've got dropping down a little bit in the rankings. So she ended up finishing at number six in the world and did make the final of Wimbledon. So she did get those points that she, well, didn't even have last year. So I was a little bit right on that one, but of course couldn't back up the US Open and really got injured in the middle of the season as well. And that really did hurt her, especially during the clay court season where she had a lot of points to defend. She lost a lot of points there and wasn't able to defend those. So putting her at number four, maybe a little bit optimistic had she had stayed healthy. She had the knee problem, of course, uh, at the start of the year in Australia as well. So. Didn't do great, but still, you know, in that middle section of the top 10. Coming at number three now, I've got Caroline Garcia. Now, 
very impressed with the second half of her season this year, and I expect that the first half of next season, she should be able to maintain that form because she doesn't have that many points to defend until later in the year. So Garcia, let's talk about it. Probably my worst prediction. It is my worst prediction. Had her at three, she finished at 20. Uh, I, was, I was a little bit right at the end. You know, she had so many points to defend at the end of the year, but just couldn't deal with the pressure and lost all those points especially those WTA Finals points, and Cincinnati. She lost in the first round as the defending champion. She did have a decent start to the year, but not as good as she needed to to keep that ranking. But, man, Garcia, what a terrible year after such a great end to the 2022 season. Coming in number two, I've got Arena Sabalenka, who is very similar to Garcia in the points de department. All right, so she did what Garcia couldn't, and Sabalenka, of course, winning the Australian Open to start the year. That set her up perfectly for the rest of the season. Of course, got to world number one, almost was world number one at the end of the year, but of course, lost to Sviantec. Sviantec went on to win the WTA final. Spoiler alert, we'll talk about that in a second, but just couldn't hold on to that world number one ranking long enough. The last match of the season basically settled her at number two, and I'll take that one as a win at number two. And coming in at number one is Iga Sviantec. I don't know how she's not going to be number one unless she gets injured or just completely loses all confidence, but she dominated everyone this year. It was so hard for anybody to even just get a set of her at points this year. Okay, so again, Sviantec at number one, and at the end of the year, it could have been the opposite. It could have been Sabalenka one, Sviantec two, but the one, two, Sabalenka, Sviantec, but very, very nice season again, and if she'd played a little bit better at Slam, she probably wouldn't have dropped her number one ranking to Sabalenka. It was really the US Open that sealed her fate. She lost in the fourth round. Of course, Sabalenka went on to the final, and that's where they changed rankings, but Man, what a season again for Sviantec and for Sabalenka. Very good at the slam, Sabalenka. Sviantec, very good all round. But let me know down in the comments below, how many did you get right? How close were you to getting the rankings this year? I mean, the one and two is probably the easier ones of the bunch. It's all about those five to ten, really, because anybody can make the top ten if they have a really good week at a slam. Of course, Krajikova made the top ten. I didn't predict that one. I thought it would be Bedosa. Uh, players like Von Drusova and Mukova. Who would have thought they'd be in the top ten at the end of last year? Because at the end of last year, they were outside the top hundred. So, didn't think that. Thought a little bit better of Garcia. Thought Benchich might surprise, but, man... It was a great season all round. Of course, I got 7 out of the 10 in the top 10. So, I mean, that's something, I guess. But let me know in the comments below. How many did you get right from your ranking predictions from 12 months ago? 